Yo, Sino here again, and I have two books to show you today, and I'm pretty excited because they are my first fine bindings ever, um, so I might ramble loads. And here they are. This was for a Society of Bookbinders exhibition, and it was set in a way where you got two books, the same, um, and one goes into the exhibition, and you get to keep one. But because I was quite slow because it was the first one I've ever done and I wasn't sure exactly how much work it would be. I had to focus on the one that would go into the exhibition to get in for the deadline and then in my free time after I finished this one which I kept. So this is actually the first time they've been together um, and if you'll see they are the mirror image uh, of, of each other. And I'll explain why I did that uh, in a second. These are both case bindings um, that are sewn all along and are tight joint. So there's no, well, you can kind of see a line up there because my um, shoulder on the round was a bit much for the size of the board. Um, but as a first first try on tight joint, it's not, it's not awful. Um, so normally when you take a book to do a fine binding you will read it at least once uh, normally and pick something from the book you know a design that's maybe featured or some kind of theme or location depending on what type of book it is well anything really and you would you know show it on the on the cover do some design interpretation and do it. but because this was the first one i ever did um I thought I would just ignore that type of style and I would just design something from scratch just to experiment on what is possible because uh, before this I had just done repairs on, on books so I just wanted to try something completely fresh completely completely new um, and I the design is I guess semi art deco-y I guess uh, inspired it's well, that's not looking good there <laughs> when I open that. Uh, yes, yeah, so semi art deco, I guess. Um, just kind of, I just kind of made something up and went with it. Um, the cloths are, well, they're both cloth. Um, and it, I think they're both, I'm fairly certain they're both washables. Uh, one purple, which might not come through that well on the camera, but in person it's really, really nice. Uh, and then a white which is almost silvery it's kind of like the my gloves actually it's like a pearl kind of shiny white uh, it's difficult to explain and then I have uh, silver tooling lines on on both of them I'll split that around so it they match up oh no uh, it's upside down there we go there we go it matches up nice like that um, Silver tooling lines because it goes very well, I think. Silver white, silver purple, it's very nice. Um, what you will notice on the one in the exhibition has stained edges. Uh, I tried, this is the first time I've ever stained something and it is uh, adequate, maybe. <laughs> um, I don't have access to a plow or a guillotine, so I hand sanded the edges uh, and then used just a like a powder pigment uh, green so not traditional red bull I don't know if that would make it easier it was a pain to burnish it in um, but I'm I mean as a first attempt it's fine I guess uh, for an exhibition you know I'm not it's not a book I'm selling so uh, it's fine um, Oh, and I, the reason I did it on this was, and not on this, because I just didn't have time. After I did it on this and handed it in, I was like, Whoa, I can't be bothered. <laughs> uh, my copy doesn't need to be as fancy uh, as at all. But everything else roughly is the same. So the end papers are a ledger style uh, end paper, slightly modified than what a traditional method would be, uh, with a purple, same purple on the cover as the strip um, 
and this is where another difference is. You might not be able to tell, but the uh, marbling is kind of purple and cream, whereas in this book it is purple and white. It probably looks the same, but on this one it is a real hand marbled sheet from Victoria Hall, whereas in this uh, book it is a photocopy of the sheet I used and I used it as a practice on here because I didn't want to use a marble sheet for the first time on you know the real thing because um, they're quite expensive um, and you will also notice on the exhibition copy the sewing is virtually unsee like you can't see it on the video uh, I guess I'll try try at the back um, try and we'll try and get the middle of a section actually that might that might give us a better view where are we in the middle of the old sections but the sewing is green I chose green to match the um, uh, that's not the best example we will go next Because sometimes when you sew, it can, and then you round it and join it. The sewing can kind of, kind of tuck, tuck behind where the, uh, where the there. That, you can see it's dark there. Um, so I use green on this, and I just use white. Uh, well, it's the, uh, it's the, it's it's probably a, it's a cream uh, thread, just a normal. That's what I would use to repair. And again, for my cup, it doesn't need to be as as extravagant um, so let's go back so that was the end papers the cloth so let's go to the covers again so the reason they are mirror like inverted uh, it's probably a better way of putting it um, copies is because I thought initially I could do them both exactly the same but once I made a template paper template I realized the way I would cut it is by putting the purple cloth down and then the white on top and then the template on top and clamp it all together like weights on you know G clamps that type of thing and then cut with a scalpel each shape and then when I did that I realized oh if I just mix and match them I will not waste loads of materials <laughs> um, so and I think that turns out quite it's quite cool this is the this design with the purple um, kind of like the white I, I kind of want it to be like a white Sun with rays kind, kind of type type deal um, this was what I consider the design the true design uh, let's open that again uh, yeah the, the cloth kind of is bunching up which is mildly annoying um, because uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe I didn't stick it down very well. <laughs> um, it's stuck on a white calico, uh, all the pieces, which was tricky because um, when you, I, I, I probably glued the wrong section. I should have glued the calico and stuck everything on it. And I think I glued the the individual panels, which not very good because they all expand in different ways and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, this I consider this to be out of the two the design, which is the one that goes into the exhibition. And there's one tooling line there, which is not bad actually. Getting perfectly vertical tooling lines is is pretty tricky, as I'll show you on mine. <laughs> uh, it doesn't line up with the point there, <laughs> so but it's not bad. Um, this was also the first time I did hand tooling with lines the only experience I had before that was just um, some lettering hand lettering which um, wasn't on a repair or anything it was just just to try it out so not bad uh, I think for a first attempt um, I still really like this design um, when I picked this up today I just thought ooh, 
I, I love it. Biased, obviously, of course. <laughs> um, just the white and the purple, man. It's purple is just supreme, um, and goes well with the green. Obviously, the Joker, uh, green, purple, uh, very good. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Done the cloth, tooling, uh, method, end papers, sewing. Oh, I, st I did sand this one um, smooth, so this could technically be edge gilded or stained. Um, and there's a bit of, I used um, two rougher sandpaper, and there's loads of um, bits of paper coming off, uh, which again, learned for the next time, unless I have a plow or something like that. But yes, uh, overall, very happy. I think they look incredible together. Look at that. Um, let's line them up properly. Uh, kinda, yeah. There we go. Nice. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd show that off um, while I have it. Uh, yeah, so see you.